Do any of you remember the television show uh, that Art Linkletter did it's called Kids Say the Darndest Things? Do you remember that? Well, I just found uh, somebody shared something with me uh, this week and about how that, that kids do say the darndest things. In fact, uh, and, and these are uh, prayers or little notes that were given to their pastors. And so I, I have a whole bunch here, but I just wanted to share three or four of them with you. Uh, for example, dear pastor, I know God loves everybody, but he never met my sister. <laughs> dear pastor, my father should be a minister. Every day he gives us a sermon about something. <laughs> Another one was, Dear Pastor, my father says I should learn the Ten Commandments, but I don't think I want to because we have enough rules already in my house. And then last but not least, Dear Pastor, I liked your sermon on Sunday, especially when it was finished. <laughs> well, you guys laughed a little too much at that one. <laughs> at any rate, we are uh, continuing a sermon series on the ten prayers that God always says yes to. And we know that, that God responds to every single prayer. Sometimes God's answer is yes. Uh, God answers in a way that we expect. Sometimes God's answer is no. And yet there are other times when God's answer is wait, not yet. And, and so today we consider that prayer that God always says yes to, and that prayer is God, forgive me. Amen. And we read about this in Psalm 32. Listen once again to what uh, King David writes here. He says, Blessed is he whose, and she whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man and woman whose sin the Lord does not count against him and in whose spirit is no deceit. And again, this is coming straight from David's heart. I mean, he really struggled in his life. He struggled with sin just like you and I do as well. And so he realized that there was healing and wholeness that can be found in, in this forgiveness. And God wants forgiveness to be a reality in our lives. And if we would just pray that prayer, God, forgive me, God will always respond some way and somehow. However, there's a little disclaimer here. There's a catch to this to some degree. Um, a yes answer is conditional. Uh, God is only really, I think, going to say yes if there are three things that happen in our hearts. And, and I kind of talked about this a little bit uh, with the children, but the first thing is confession. We've got to own up to it. We've got to own up to our own junk. And, uh, I mean, James talked about this quite a bit. You know, he says in uh, chapter 5 or 16, he says, Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and it's effective. So being able to own up to it. And we read just a little earlier, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess, if we confess our sins to each other. Or I'm sorry, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And then last but not least, we can go back to the Psalms. You know, Psalm 38, uh, verse 18. Here is David. He's saying, I confess my iniquity. I am troubled by my sin. So he was troubled by it. So confession is absolutely essential. And if we don't confess it, then we just harbor it. We keep it inside of us, and it becomes like a poison that poisons our very, very soul. Uh, I've heard it said that unforgiveness is like drinking poison and hoping the other person dies. Right? Exactly. That's, that's what it is. I mean, that's, that's the way that uh, unconfessed sin is in our in our lives. I mean, think about this. What would, what's the first thing you would do if you were, say, bitten by a snake? What would you do? You would want to get the poison out, right? Well, very much so. I mean, that's kind of the way it is with, with sin in our lives. Is confession is that opportunity. It's a gift that's given to us. 
so that we can experience healing and wholeness in our lives. I mean, of course, I mean, we could keep it buried up inside here all that we want. But the thing is, is that we'll never experience peace. We'll never experience com comfort or, or, or love or any of the good gifts that God wants to give to us. We don't have to keep that baggage. You know, somebody said that, you know, if you don't want to have baggage, then let go of it, right? It's no longer baggage, right? So let it go. It's, you know, so confession. Um, and, you know, again, King David, he had something to say about that, about his own unconfessed sin. Listen to what he said. He says, when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. And then he goes on to say, Then I acknowledged my sin to you. He did something about it. And he said, And I did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. That's how God responded to King David. So confessing sin to God, get that poison out. It's, it doesn't belong there. I think of the great theologian, St. Augustine. He says the confession of evil works is the beginning of good works in our lives. So God begins that good work in our lives. So, so confession is extremely important. And the second thing is repentance. And you've heard me talk quite a bit about repentance and the, and the word that's used in the, in the New Testament in the original language is, is metanoia. And that just simply means changing the way that we think. The way that we think about sin, the way that we think about God, the way that we think about others, the way that we think about our enemies. It's changing the way that we think. It, we have to have that ingredient as well. And if we have a change of mind, we'll eventually experience a change of heart. Uh, and then the third thing, and the third thing is to be able to forgive others. Something about forgiveness is not real, it's not fully realized unless we forgive others. I mean, that is a non-negotiable. You know, I think that maybe two-thirds of the teaching of Jesus is all about forgiveness. Just look, at, look over the Gospels. About two-thirds of his teaching was about forgiveness and how that we should receive forgiveness and be set free and how we should forgive others. Um, you know, it was once said, maybe you've heard this before, is uh, to err is human, uh, but to forgive is out of the question. No way. Never going to forgive that person for what he or she did. It doesn't hurt that person. It just hurts us. You know, to hang on to that. Forgiveness is a gift that we give, well, not just to others, but it's, it's kind of a selfish gift, too, because we give it to ourselves. It sets us, it sets us free. And it's not easy to do, not by our own willpower. You know, there's no such thing, really, as willpower Christianity. It, does, it never works. But, and Gandhi knew this. Mahatma Gandhi, he said this. He says, the weak can never forgive. Forgiveness is the attribute of the strong that's hard to do but it's it's not through our own strength it has to be through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit that is alive and well in our hearts that's where our true strength comes from so the key I really think to a happy life a happy marriage happy anything is 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 forgiving living is forgiving and to constantly do it. And sometimes it's a process. You know, sometimes uh, it, it takes many, many times. You know, that's why Jesus said, you know, 70 times 7. You know, sometimes it is a process. And when you forgive others, remember, that doesn't excuse the sin. It doesn't excuse it. It doesn't make it right. But forgiveness, again, is a non-negotiable so in Scripture, we read time and time again throughout the New Testament about how we are to forgive others. Uh, listen to the words of Jesus. He says, For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. 
But if you do not forgive people their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. So you see how there's, there's, a, there's a connection there between uh, forgiving others and realizing God's forgiveness in our lives. Uh, also, here is Jesus once again. He says in Luke chapter 6, But I tell you who hear me, love your enemies. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you and pray for those who mistreat you. Did you hear those words? Did I lose you there? Love your enemies. And one of the ways that we love them is by forgiving. Forgiving them. And what else? Jesus goes on to say, do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given unto you. I mean, there are so many passages that say, look, this is a gift that I'm giving to you so that you would, can experience healing and wholeness. And, you know, the word salvation you know, in the Latin is where we get that word salve, right? Which means salvation just simply means healing. And we all need healing. We all experience brokenness in our lives. I do, and so do you, and those around us. But forgiveness, that's one way for us to experience that, that healing salve that only the divine physician can give to us. Now, why else should we forgive? Well, I think of, of the words of Oscar Wilde. He said this. He said that always forgive your enemies. Nothing annoys them so much. <laughs> so how many times should we forgive? As many times as it takes. As many times as it takes. And you know, the thing about God God has a way of, you know, we just maybe prayed a little bit earlier, as far as the east is from, our west, from the west, so have our sins been separated from us. I mean, God, God forgives, and guess what else? God forgets. That's the way it works with God. It's thrown into the sea of forgetfulness, and there it is remembered no more. And that's the way, again, it works with God. You know, the Apostle Paul said, love keeps no record of wrongs. What's done is done. So what are the results? If we really uh, choose to forgive and to receive the forgiveness, what do we get? What do we get in return? Well, number one, we get an inner peace. Uh, we have a peace which passes all understanding, the Apostle Paul talked about. And um, we also receive a kind of divine rest. Jesus says, come to me, all of you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I'll give you Rest. There's a rest that comes from it. And last but not least, there's a freedom. We're, we're, we're set free from, again, those things that, that hold us in bondage. Maybe something that we've held on to for, for years, and it's still there. Well, we have an opportunity to experience uh, freedom. All right, now I want to close with this. And uh, so, does... Um, does anybody know what holiday is celebrated on January 1st? Nobody knows? New Year's Day, right? <laughs> Does anybody know what holiday from the balcony? I want to hear from up here. You know, uh, um, from February the 14th? I said the balcony. You know. <laughs> How many of you know what holiday is celebrated on March 17th? How many of you know what holiday, well, no, it's not really a holiday, but whose birthday is on December the 15th? Mine. <laughs> All right, one more. Does anybody know what holiday is celebrated on December 25th? Okay, you did really good. Okay, I'm very proud of you. But now, this is going to be a tricky one. What about the first Sunday in August? Does anybody know what holiday is celebrated on the first Sunday in August? International Forgiveness Day. You didn't know that, did you? Well, I'll tell you what. You don't have to wait until August. Forgive today. Forgive now. 
say to God today and to each other, please forgive me. Amen.